This is the three-phase power laboratory. Uh, this is a special video edition during, done during the COVID-19 period. So it's going to be a little different because I'm going to try and use this for data collection for individual students. So the, the laboratory is pretty long but pretty self-explanatory. The two main pieces of equipment we are going to be using is the three-phase power source. We'll talk about that. This is the resistor board we have used in the past and this is we can do our Y and Delta circuits on this. In terms of, of instruments we're going to use a new special meter. This is a three-phase power meter. We're going to use a clamp-on ammeter for measuring currents. Much safer and much easier to measure AC currents with that unit and we'll use our regular meter for uh, measuring a couple values. To get started let's talk about the laboratory three-phase source. There's quite a few terminals on the unit. Uh, on the left hand side we have a voltage unit. This is a fixed voltage of 120 slash 208 volts. This is the single phase voltage. This is the three phase line to line voltage. This is a fixed supply here, so it is particularly hazardous. This source here is a variable. It adjusts with the uh, knob, very similar to our single phase variac. This is a three phase variac. The other sets of terminals are DC, so we won't use them this lab. We'll use them with the motors lab. So I'm going to initially show you the voltage and uh, uh, waveforms and values associated with the fixed supply. So the wall unit on, by the door turns on the main panel for the bench and then when we energize it we see these lights. Whenever the lights are on that means power is available at the terminals and so you must be safe. If we look on the three-phase voltmeter, we'll see that we see the three-phase voltages. We could call this VAN, VBN, and VCN, where N is the neutral connection, which is the white terminal. So red, black, blue, ABC in this case. Um, you can see that the voltages are close to balance. We always assume balance. This is what the waveforms look like on the scope. So you can see our ABC. When you look at these, you'll see that these are not so clean looking sine waves. That's not unusual for the power system, that there is some distortion in the waveforms. But for our laboratory and calculations, we're going to assume these are sinusoids. By the way, I'm using 10 times probes on the scopes, so the signals that are measured are actually one-tenth of the value from the system. So instead of 120 volts, we're only really measuring 12 volts on the scope. Now, balance not only refers to as the sine waves in their magnitude, and we see they're pretty well balanced, but it also refers to the timing. So I'm going to change the display so we can look at the phase, but the three phases. So I have modified the display to show the phase between the three signals. And you can see phase 1 to 2 is 120 to 121 degrees, 121 for phase 2 to 3, and then 117. So there's a slight phase shift error in the uh, three-phase signal, but um, it won't contribute to too much error in our measurements. So now we are assured that we have a balanced three-phase system, balanced voltages, and balanced in time. For the first circuit, which is a balanced Y with a neutral connection, I've connected phase A, B, and C 
to the 100 ohm resistors on the board. Those three resistors are connected to a neutral, which goes back to the source neutral. I'm using the variable supply here, and I've set the voltages to near 100 volts. So these are the voltages and currents and wattages you will record. So you can see the voltages for A, B, and C very close to one another. The amperage also very close. Some differences because the resistors are not identical. This contributes to some slight wattage differences. We see the individual wattages A, B, and C and then the total. This is the VARs. These will be very nearly zero because they are resistive loads. The volt amps uh, are of course the same as the watts because the VARs are zero. And finally the power factor all zeros. On this unit you can also read for a given phase. You can read the voltage, current, wattage, and VARs. Phase 2, voltage, current, wattage, and VARs. And then finally, voltage, current, and wattage, and VARs for the third, third phase. Alright, so that's the first set of measurements. So the previous measurement, which I still have set up, is called the three-phase four-wire system. We have three phases, red, black, blue, and then the yellow wire, which is forming the fourth wire or neutral. Right? Now, what we're going to do is disconnect the neutral connection for the, the, the yellow wire, which is going to make it a three-phase, three-wire system. Now when I do this, I want you to pay attention of, to, the, to the voltage readings that you'll see. Of course the voltages come from the supply, so you shouldn't, we don't expect to see any difference. See, the neutral has been disconnected, so this is a three-wire, three, three-phase, three-wire system. We see the voltages are the same, the currents are very similar. The wattages, very similar to before, of course the VARs, and the volt amps. And again, phase A, phase B, phase C. So you can see that in this case, it didn't matter whether we had three, the fourth, or the neutral wire. And that's because each one of the resistors, 100, 100, 100, produce balanced currents those balance currents when they add up in the neutral cancel out so we don't even need that third wire. You can only use the three wire three phase system when you have balanced resistors. Because that's what we're going to do now is unbalance the system for part two. So in part two, we have kept phase A with 100 ohms. Phase uh, B is now 67 ohms, and we've done that by paralleling the 200 ohm and 100 ohm on the resistor board. And then lastly, we've switched phase C to be 200 ohms, and in this case, we have the neutral connection back to the system. So we're going to see different currents on each phases and also on the neutral. So here's the data for part 2A, which is three phase unbalanced Y with a neutral connection. Now we see the three voltages very similar to one another. Now let's look at the amperages. Now we see that the amperages changed. The first one did not change much but the second one went up by 0.484 or almost a half an amp and the sec third one went down 
to about a half an amp, and that's because of the resistor changes. Remember we had 67 ohms in phase B and 200 ohms in phase A. But the three currents uh, are then that, unbalanced. The wattages, of course, unbalance also because current I squared R becomes wattage and so we see changes in the wattage. The total wattage didn't change much because the decrease in phase C was made up for in phase B. Of course the VARs are very nearly zero and the volt amps are very much similar to the wattages and the power factors are all one. Again for phase A we see voltage, current, wattage and VARs, voltage, current, wattage and VARs for phase B, voltage, current, wattage and VARs for phase C. Now we are going to measure the neutral current. In order to measure the neutral current without disconnecting the circuit, which could be hazardous in an AC case, we're going to use this clamp-on ammeter. Now the clamp-on ammeter is most commonly used in AC measurements and it is actually a form of a specialized transformer. This is a core material. The instrument is actually a secondary and we are going to clamp around a wire and when we do that we'll get a reading. In this case 0.87 amps. Right? Now that happens because the current carrying conductor, the wire, yellow wire there, creates a magnetic field. The core, which is the red material, the magnetic core then uh, is energized with a magnetic field and then that magnetic field voltage and current are measured by the unit. Now, uh, for very small currents, this isn't the best method, but for uh, active currents, this is a very useful instrument because you don't have to break the circuit. Then you can, un you can measure any currents you want. All right, so that's part 2B. So in part 2B, we're going to have the unbalanced Y but instead of having the neutral connection back from the common point to the source neutral, we're going to, we took that wire away, so this is the three phase, three wire system, but we are also going to measure the common point voltage. This is the common point of the Y, and we're going to measure its voltage. So first off, we'll look at the three phase voltages and currents. Of course, the voltages are nearly balanced because they come from the source. The amperages have changed. If you notice, this current, the A current went up a little bit, the B current went down a little bit, and C went up a little bit. A, B was originally about one and a half, and C was uh, uh, about a half. So you've seen they've come together a little bit. The wattages, of course, change with the currents. Now, interestingly, if we look at the voltage between the common point and the neutral, we see actually there is 29 volts between the neutral and the common point. Now, this is uh, an interesting condition. So, because that means each one of the loads, the 100 ohms, the 67 ohm, and the 200 ohm resistors, now have different voltages because the neutral is no longer zero volts. That is not a typical situation. It should be zero volts. Now I'm going to measure the individual phase voltages to show you uh, how they have changed also. So I have disconnected the uh, common point voltage measure and I'm going to measure each individual phase with respect to the uh, common point. So the common point is now one end of the voltmeter. When I measure phase A you'll see 103 volts. When I measure phase B, 76.9.
because that was the 67 ohm resistor. And finally, phase C is 128.3 volts. So the unbalance that it was caused by the loads being different resistances now provides different voltages for each phase. This is not a good um, situation for three phase and that's why we normally use that common connection between the um, common point and the neutral which balances the voltages. So now I've just put the neutral voltage back in. The currents are imbalanced but not the voltages on the load. So that's three phase Y balanced, unbalanced, three wire and four wire. So circuit three is a balanced delta. Each one of the resistors is 300 ohms. By putting the 100 ohm and the 200 ohm of the board in series. This reduces the power uh, so deltas are normally higher power loads because uh, they have a higher voltage per phase and so by using a larger higher resistor we won't generate as much heat. You're not in the laboratory but you can smell the resistors warming up as we did in the single phase power lab. So now I have 300 ohms between A phase and B phase, between B phase and C phase, and between C phase and A phase. Now if we look at the circuit, we will notice that there is really only two apparent voltages serving this load. A voltage between A and B, and a voltage between B and C. So I'm going to first show you that voltage on the scope. So for the delta circuit, we start out with the same voltages. Balanced in voltage and balanced in phase. But now we want to look at the A, the B voltages and the difference between them. So I'm going to turn off the C phase voltage and then look at the difference between the A and the B. So what is being displayed is phase A, the yellow, phase B, the green, and then I created a math function to create the difference between A and B. If I look at the voltages involved, you can see phase A is 100, phase B is a 200, phase C Uh, between the two, A to B is 173. And this voltage is called the line-to-line -line voltage because it's between A and B and it's always in the balance system root 3 times these values. Of course root 3 is 1.732 so if I take 100 times 1.732 I get very nearly, in this case, displayed 172. Now the phase of that signal, you can see that that signal is slightly in front of the uh, yellow, which is the A phase. And I've measured that value to be the phase between the math function and phase 1 is 30 degrees. By calculation, it should be exactly 30 degrees. So the phase A to B is 30 degrees in front of the A phase and of course 150 degrees in front of the B phase, the green one. Now on the circuit we see the voltage, the balance voltages, phase A, B, and C. The currents are all very close to one amp because they're, uh, those, these are called the line currents. This is actually IA, IB, IC from the source the wattages are very nearly 100 watts because 300 ohm loads. The volt amps is of course near zero. VA is nearly the same as wattage and power factor is one. And then phase A, phase B, 
and phase C. Now we want to measure the individual phase curve phase A, 0.53 amps phase B, and lastly, 0.53 amps for phase C. So balance currents on the phases become uh, balance currents in the source. Now, for the currents, the relationship between the line currents, which are shown by this meter, and the phase currents, right, if, which is 0.57, if you run the numbers, there's a root 3 factor between the phase current and the line current. And that's because in the circuit, the line current, which is IA, IB, and IC, is actually made up of two phase currents, IAB and ICA for phase A. And so two currents work to make up the third current. And this line current will be always root 3 times the individual phase currents in a balanced system. So for the last circuit, the unbalanced delta, we're going to have 100 ohms A to B, 200 ohms B to C, and lastly 300 ohms C to A. Uh, the setup is, is a little bit different, but we, we have A going to A. We go through this wire to B through 100 ohm. That's going to very, be a very hot circuit because that's a very high voltage on a low resistance. And then we have the three phases. So for the line voltages, 100 volts. That would be line to line 173. The amps are different. We have two amps, 2.2 and 1.2 for the equivalent of the three different resistors. The wattages, 200, 220, 121. These are 100 watt resistors, so we can't leave this for very long. And power factors, very nearly one. And that completes the three phase balanced and unbalanced Y and delta.